you got fans on the front straightaway, back straightaway, everywhere you go now. Um, race was great tonight. Seems like you were a little, uh, you had to be a little patient, a little wait, wait for the right time, it looked like, to make the right moves and for the car to come in. Yeah, I just uh, the closer to the front my car gets, the better it gets. I knew early uh, there was quite a bit of just slime on the bottom, really. So it was uh, a lot of wheel spin down there. So I was trying to not do that, you know, as, as least as I could. That way it saved my tires for the last 20. So trying to be somewhat patient. And uh, the racetrack was kind of moving around a little bit. We got by Mikey, then he got back by me. And uh, the first time we caught lap traffic here, we had that long run. And, there's a couple cars I just really couldn't get by. I kind of, kind of died out. So I was just trying not to push myself too hard there, and um, it pretty much all worked out. Cause once we finally got a little clean air on our nose, you know, we uh, we could charge the corner a whole lot harder and uh, seemed to stick better. So that, that really well. Helped us. And it also seemed like the groove didn't really. It looked like it wanted to rubber up, but it didn't really go one lane rubber. It looked like you could kind of still move on it all the way to the end almost. Yeah, no, it, it was kind of dirty all the way across it really. It never cleaned up and rubbered up anywhere that I found. Um, the only place that I really found that there was way more grip was getting in three on the top. And uh, I hadn't been up there all night. Uh, but if you're running behind a couple cars and they move toward the bottom, they, they dirty it up just enough grip there that, that you get loose getting in. So it was kind of a, uh, I wouldn't say it was a chess game. It's kind of like checkers, but um, once McCready caught those cars, uh, they kind of had him pinned down on the bottom, and uh, it just let me get a run on the top. Now, obviously, this is the last one here at I-80. How much does that mean for you to actually get? Obviously, it's been around for a long time, um, but it looks like this is the last one at this track. Seems like to be a driver favorite in a way. Yeah, I mean, I, I've always liked this place since the first time I came here. Um, we felt like we probably should have won that one, and uh, I hit the wall trying to pass Scott there. So, and then we come back and won, and then won again. So, in uh, 18 with with Lance, and then we won tonight. So, we won this race three times and to, to be the be the last one. I hope we're not the last one. I hope uh, hope Joe and Steve can work something out with somebody and keep this place open and going. Uh, there's not many big tracks left anymore that race this good. Well, we did. Uh, we talked to Madden the other day about. It seems like y'all being buddies. Y'all used to be rivals back in the day. It seems like down in the southeast. What did I know? Y'all are parked next to each other. Is he okay? What was the reason for him actually like leaving? Do you have uh, an idea? Yeah, I, I think he's okay. He said he was sore. I talked to him yesterday morning or, or texting. But um, you know, he just killed that car, and I don't think he has abundance of cars. You know, he, he's out on the road and. He, he ain't gonna he ain't gonna chance tearing up two cars starting in the back of the B main here. So uh, he said he was gonna go home and uh, or, or go back to Rocky and build another car. So that one there is pretty much junk. I think you'll crack the two million dollar mark this year. I don't know. We uh, you know I I had that in my my mind when they announced all these races and everything. I don't know. Uh, Madden got a big jump on us at Bristol. That, that's where we missed out. Right. Uh, we wasn't as good as we needed to be at Bristol at the first of the year. So we got behind there, but. Um, as long as I can keep him away from the racetracks, it does help out. Well, that, that that's kind of sad considering he's not here tonight. <laughs> well, I mean, he, he seems to be pretty tough, and the rivalry between y'all was real at one point, apparently. What, what is the deal with y'all being buddies all of a sudden? Uh, we just grew up, you know. Um, when you grow up and you, you run good, and I got a lot of respect for him. He's got a lot of respect for me. And just, uh, you know, I was, I was kind of young and dumb when I started there just coming up. And I moved to the Carolinas, and uh, you know he, he was the guy to beat there. And for, for whatever reason, we just kind of clashed because we was we was always starting beside of one another. And uh, you know sometimes uh, when you're young, you, you rub a lot of fenders and quarter panels. But uh, we both growed, I think, uh, from that, and uh, we both learned how to race each other with uh, more respect than we used to. And you know uh, we are from the same state where we live within an hour from one another, so. Um, we can drive all the way to Nebraska or we can go to uh, Wisconsin and we're probably going to be in the same uh, row as one another. So okay. uh, uh, eventually you got to learn to tolerate one another. Well, and he, he also mentioned how having different chassis was a, a deal with y'all's collaboration. I guess chassis, you really ain't really, what are you doing with your car type deal? Yeah. Nah, I don't. Every now and then we might talk about tires or something like that, but. I've never asked him, you know, what right rear spring he's going right. to be in or, or anything Compared like Compared to that. if it was a Longhorn or if you were a Rocket. Yeah, you know, you know whatever. You know, um, I've never considered him a teammate or whatever, so I've never went to 
went to him for help. Um, so, you know, uh, I'm not bugging him. He's not bugging me. So we get along pretty good. Well, it does seem sometimes like in the sprint car pitting area, everybody, they put their trailers down, they roll their cars out. Everybody's kind of fun and happy. It seems like here in this late mile world, I don't know if it's because y'all race for so much, you could be parked right next to somebody sometimes and not even speak to them. You know, it, it's like very closed off sometimes. You think this is bad, you'll go asphalt racing. Uh, well, I bet that's even worse. Uh, but Asphalt racing is terrible. I, I've done that for many years, and uh, you show up there and you ain't got no friends besides the ones you brought with you. But Do you know uh, what I mean, though? Sometimes you, it's not yeah. as, you know, is that just because of the money and the competition that's on the I line? I don't think so. I, I, think we, uh, I think we talk to each other quite a bit, really, you know. Uh, at least I do. I feel like I got quite a few friends at the racetrack. Um, probably got way more friends at the racetrack than I do at home. So, uh, you know, that, that's just the way it is. And, you know, it's probably from just the outsider looking in. Um, during the hot days, you know, we really don't come out a lot. And, right. Uh, we, we work on our, our cars uh, selective timing um, whenever we don't, you know, have a lot of fans around. So, you know, it is what it is. Are you going to get a dry fit? That's the biggest question of the whole entire world right now. <laughs> uh, I don't know if we're going to get a dry fit or not. <laughs> Probably saying. not, you know. Um, they, <laughs> we never had but one. And we had to put them on the sales rack, so oh. it didn't go very well. But, you know, who, who knows? We'll, we'll try to uh, broaden our horizon a little bit. But, you know, I just... Uh, I don't like people um, degrading people that work for me, so uh, when I get tired of it, I'll call them out. Okay, so there is hope for a dry fit, but not for that guy. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Okay. This is how we ride. This is how we do.